Andrew Maganga's life has changed vastly in the past few months. Last fall, he was hired to work security at Qatar's World Cup. Now, he's back home in Kenya after being arrested and jailed on the tournament's last day for protesting over wages. After we heard that news, we were very shocked. How is this going to happen? Maganga says he's among 200 people that were deported over the protest at Stark Security in January. Stark hired Maganga on a six-month contract last October as Qatar faced intense scrutiny over its rights record, including the treatment of workers. Rights groups had warned that security workers were especially vulnerable during the World Cup. Even the police, the people who were working there, we tried to explain our issue, but it was all in vain. Charity Equidem documented the deportation of 38 former Stark security guards to Kenya, India, Pakistan, and Nepal. Mustafa Kadri is the executive director there. And it sends a very clear signal is do what you're told, don't complain. If you're being treated very poorly, you have to hang out and hope that eventually you will get some kind of payment. Because ultimately, these are people who have come to Qatar, not for tourism, not for other reasons. They've come there purely to make money because where they come from, they can't get those kinds of opportunities. Qatar's media office did confirm that about 200 employees of Stark were involved in a protest in January but also said Qatar doesn't, quote, arrest or deport workers for seeking to resolve their employment disputes. So any attempt by those workers to organize, even in the most informal, non-political way, gets punished, and workers know that. When Stark terminated Maganga, it didn't comply with a month-long paid notice period for which the media office says it would be penalized for. I can say it's a difficult moment for me, but we are hoping Maybe justice will be made. Maganga's official deportation order cited a charge of labor strike and banned his return to Qatar, which forbids workers from organizing and striking. Stark's parent company, Esthamar Holdings, declined to comment on the case. Exchanges from inside the BBC, they talk about the risk of violating Indian laws. It's easier to rake up the freedom of speech debate, but does it give anyone a free pass to knowingly violate the law? America supports India because it needs India's support in return. And India is working with the US because it suits India's interests. This is how geopolitics works. Last night, he diffused a crisis with his defense minister. But today, Netanyahu was confronted with a new problem. His cabinet seems to have rebelled against him. The UK is looking at the Indian subcontinent to fill its coffers. That India seems to be negotiating from a position of power, like a partner and not a former colonist.